Hi, I'm Bob, and you're watching Million Mile Garage. We do get our Mustang, our 1989 Ford 5-liter running today, but just a quick 20-second recap that started the whole project. Our engine ingested a stainless steel hose clamp shortly after a routine uh, upper intake job to fix a coolant leak, and it ended up punching a hole in the cylinder head, destroying the piston, and also wiping out that cylinder, requiring a rebore, so we had the engine professionally cleaned, and we had all eight cylinders bored 30 thousandths over, new camshaft bushings, and new freeze plugs as well. And basically got it prepped for our new Summit 17302C hyper-eutectic pistons. As you can see, the exhaust system does hold quite a bit of coolant, and we also find out later on after the install, coolant does not evaporate even after several months. So uh, stay tuned. And we're going to just show you a little bit of putting the rest of the engine together, dropping it in the car, and actually getting it started today. All right, we're getting close. We're going to slather on a little bit of sealant on both sides. We're going to glue on the, the timing cover. And Austin has decided, since we had just glued this timing cover on before the engine coughed its guts, um, this uh, water pump is glued to the uh, timing cover so well we decided just to leave it. We're going to risk it. I don't think it's going to leak. Um, this, uh, this black Permatex Ultra RTV, this stuff is like glue. It is unbelievable. And he's just going to smooge it around. I found that seems to work really good. And then once he has this smooshed on both sides, we're going to stick it to the block first. Cool. Yep, those locating dowels. And those aren't there just to secure the gasket. They're really there to center the timing cover, right? Because when the cover's not centered, then you'll have a, a regular wear pattern on the uh, balancer seal and it'll leak. That looks really good. There you go, you got it. It's on. I have an arrangement of tools. Yeah, that's right, you got that, uh, the ratchet up here you're using to get to these, right? Those There's two different to sizes to. and yeah. then those, can't get to it with a ratchet. Isn't that weird? Okay. One of the last things we're doing, we're cleaning out our oil pan, and uh, believe it or not, there actually was a little sludge down in the pan. Yeah, and you dug it out. Look at all that crud. That's all it was, just in one spot there. Everything else was pretty, pretty clean. Cool. All right, Austin just gonna put a little pea-sized blob in the corners, we got one of these really nice composite one-piece uh, steel core silicone gaskets. He's just putting a little down on that, that's plenty. And he's going to smooth each one on. It's a little hard to get that, You got it catches on the edge right here. Just like that, see how that went in? Yeah. And he's going to just, we're just going to go around, we're going to hit all four corners, just because that's what the instructions say to do. And then we're going to put a little dab. Uh, on each corner on the top as well before we drop the pan on. Is that look good? Yeah, just dry. it'll it'll slide in. Yep, and then we'll just line up the holes and you're good. Yep, that looks good. Yep, and it's gonna have to compress quite a bit. That's what it's designed to do on the ends there. That looks real good. Helpful hint, y'all, on these Flotec heads, these uh, goofy Thermactor plugs, and you'll you'll learn about those if you've messed around with these Ford. These are 351 style heads. I guess we're mounting them on a 302. Um, there's one on uh, each side on each end of the head. Obviously, there's not one here. And the problem we ran into on these Flotec heads is they were drilled deeper than the stock ones, and there's only one size Thermactor plug. So what we ended up having to do on the front over here 
uh, when we mounted this alternator bracket is the uh, the stock uh, fastener was now too short because that thermactor plug goes way into the head that's got the threads in it. So we actually used one of the old head bolts because we use, use new ARPs and that was the perfect length uh, so that we got enough thread engagement that we weren't worried about stripping any threads. And we had that problem on each one of the heads. I think the thermactor is actually being used on, I think it's the top, is it the top one? Yeah, it's the top one on that side, right? And then they're over here as well, just kind of showing you a couple more. There's a thermactor plug in there as well. Kind of hard to see because of the lighting. Matter of fact, let me just put a little extra light on this. There, you can see in there a little better. That's the thermactor plug. You see that one's like buried way, way deep in there. It's really hard to see it. And we just had to use just a, a little bit longer fastener than what the factory had to mount those front accessories. You see the head bolt goes right into the, the stock style thermactor threads. You still want to take any wiring with it. We don't have anything stuck in there, do we? No. I think we're good. That looks good. Just keep an eye on that. And I'm watching the steering column on this side so I don't catch it with the header stud. Yeah, there's room on this side. Yep, she's going down real nice. Everything looking good? Yeah. I'm not catching anything, am I? No. I'm clear on my side. Stud for the mount. I don't think I pointed it out earlier, but we are using convertible motor mounts. One, because I think they're the easiest to obtain now, but two, they lower the engine in the car by how much, Austin? Uh, half an inch. About half an inch, and we're, we're a little concerned that our intake manifold combo might be slightly taller than stock. Okay. I think we're looking good. Just a smidge. I'm holding it about where it should be. Okay, and mine's located, so... Let's see if she'll go. Dropping right in. Mine's in on this side. Keep going. Okay. That's pretty much laying there. Uh, do you want to just, do you want me to crawl into the car and make sure it's not pinching anything? Yeah, let's make sure nothing's pinched. And I know we've got those little locating lugs on those motor mounts. Let's make sure those fall in the slots. But that's pretty much in. Look like anything's getting pinched. Yeah, and I know this. Okay, let's see where we're at today. Looks like we got a drive shaft and an exhaust system left to be put in. We still got the uh, upper intake sitting here, glistening in the sun. We got the uh, engine covered up so we wouldn't scratch up the rockers with the the chain when we dropped the engine in a few days ago. Let's just crawl underneath. I think we got the transmission in place. Ooh, transmission jack, that's nice. All right, and there she is hanging in there, hanging a little low. And uh, all right, so let's get to work. Semi-useful tip, this air tube right here connects to both of the catalytic converters in the rear. If you're putting this car back together on your back, like we're going to be doing, you have to take this exhaust system when you've got limited clearance down here. And by the way, sometimes if you've got the four jack there, it's going to be in the way. You're going to have to take this and rotate it like a 45. I don't remember which direction, but rotating at a 45 will allow this tube to snake up in between the exhaust header and the firewall. Um, if you don't rotate it like that with limited space, it's going to be a very frustrating experience. Okay, we're getting close. We got all the towels off. You can see the rocker covers came out unscathed. That's nice. Hmm, look what Austin did this time. He taped up the uh, intake manifold. Can't imagine why. <laughs> So Austin worked topside this morning and I did all the hard stuff below. So we got the exhaust system hooked up. Got all the stuff underneath. 
All the wires that go into the side of the trans, speedo cable, all that stuff down there, all that's hooked up, so that's good. So the only thing we got left, we got to put this bad boy on. And uh, I guess we got some other peripherals, right? We got the, the fan, the shroud, the, uh, the belts, all that stuff. And then uh, the only other thing we got, got to do is we've got to get another O2 sensor. That's why you take them out on the passenger side for you to try to put the exhaust back in. So we ordered two new ones, 250,000 miles. I figure it's probably due anyway. That's fine. All right, we're just taking a breather and we'll get the rest of this together. Let me know when. When? Okay, that shot way up, didn't it? <laughs> because the uh, catalytic converters probably still have coolant in them. I think what we want to do is set the idle down so that it's idling at like 1800, you know, because it's really hammering those lifters until they get pumped up. All right, we're going to fire it up one more time. Just had to check for leaks and stuff. We had a loose radiator hose. We're good? Yeah. Evidently, this exhaust had a lot more antifreeze left in it than we thought. about uh, 10 minutes. Should be okay. Should name it Christine.
pretty good. It's pretty well quieted down. Probably look pretty good. Woo! Thought we were gonna burn the house down. Okay, finally quit smoking. Sounds pretty good. Valve train's quiet now. Yeah, the valve train's getting a little quieter. I just need to pump all that air out of the lifter. Yeah, that sounds better. That's acceptable. Yeah, we still need to uh, check the ignition timing. We're on a little bump even. That's normal. Yeah, that's way better. And no leaks. No drifts. Okay, this is what we've been waiting for. It's officially back together. I think it's done smoking. We still gotta work on the tune a little bit. the hood one more time. Hood fits pretty good.
exhaust one more time. Huh? I'm listen to that exhaust one more time. That sounds great. Just running.